Hey guys, Kevin Shaw here, Editor-in-Chief of Mopar Connection Magazine. We're working on Marsha today, and if you can't already tell, it's raining right now. But uh, I got the top down, so the easy up is over there. And I'm just going to take the carburetor off. Right now, we are just not getting the throttle response we want. We know that our accelerator pump is shot. And quite frankly, we think this thing is just in dire need of a rebuild. So we got ourselves a rebuild kit. We have our ultrasonic cleaner that we got from Summit Racing. We're gonna take this apart, we're gonna soak it, and try to get all the circuits cleaned up. I'm gonna spray a little bit of this, get things loosened up, pop off the carburetor. These bolts are barely, barely engaging into the intake manifold. Originally, Marsha came with a two barrel on the 318 not this four barrel so obviously someone swapped out to the larger four barrel intake manifold sometime during its life and uh, didn't do a really good job putting it on so oh that is finger tight no kidding I had one tight bolt no wonder we had vacuum problems look at our custom vacuum block off it's a plastic golf tee Initially, when we wanted to rebuild our Carter carburetor, we had ordered the wrong rebuild kit. So effectively, we're showing you the second time we rebuilt this carburetor. The first time we had ordered a Carter AFB kit instead of an AVS. That was our mistake. In the next few minutes, we're going to show Jim Hannon walking us through how to rebuild our Carter carburetor. Hopefully, the next 10 minutes or so are pretty useful to you guys looking at doing your own rebuild. All right, let's pop it open. Woo! That's hot. Well, we can definitely see that it um, changed the changed the color of our cleaner. It's a lot of <laughs> it's a lot dirtier than before. Maybe Clearly, it, it did its job. I mean, even the rust kind of it, it looks like it ate the rust. Off. It really did. All right, that's one. Okay. Oop. Well, it got a lot of that schmutz out of there. Got the boosters. Well, started out, we ended up, after trying to match pieces together, we ended up with a AFB kit. Oh. AFB kit won't work. So, what we'll have to do here is undo what I did the other day. Yeah, that gasket's it's un blocking it stuff off. The new one has got exactly what we need. Looks really nice, it's exact fit. Good. The needles and seats look like they're correct because, well, they're made for it and not for an AFB. Didn't realize there's that much difference, evidently, so we were wrong. This All one. right, and uh, where'd we get where'd we get our replacement kit from? We got it from Mike's Carburetor Parts. Mike's Carburetor Parts. Here, let me show everyone the bag. Here it is. There you go. I've heard all good about this guy's stuff, and the one I'm looking for at right here. Um, yeah, it's got everything we need. This should be a pretty quick little, and these, they gave me the dash pod gasket to go here. Found me a Phillips and a straight screwdriver. And there on your left, your I'm other look, left. My other left, I'm, not <laughs> I'm okay. All right, this would be your accelerator pump discharge nozzle. So when you step on the gas pedal, it squirts a little bit of fuel out. And car on fall on his face it kind of accelerates off hence the name accelerator pump these dudes here when you give it uh, the vacuum pulls the fuel out of the bowl through the jets and out the discharge nozzle here and that mixes fuel so that puts it into a vaporous state for better Ignition down when you hit the spark to it. You don't want to bear down so much you pull the threads out of the carburetor, but you don't want to leave them loose. That'll do, donkey. Now we'll try this side. Look at there. Amazing when you have the right part. Oh, there we go. Came loose. Yay! I didn't have to get ugly with it. Good. Needle and seat work in such a way as when the fuel comes in the uh, float will be down and allows fuel in and it kind of escapes around here and the one that gets to the upper part of the level 
float pushes the needle and it closes it off. I know the floats look kind of cruddy, but there really is nothing wrong with them. I'm trying not to block everything with my hands, but small parts, you got to be on it. We'll put in the second one. All that little clip thing does, it just keeps it from falling apart. It lets it keep, allows it to follow. Like so. This accelerator pump goes through there. Like so. These are the metering rods. The metering rod does. Rides in a bore. Keeps the primary jets closed off while you're in idle. Springs on here determine how much vacuum it's going to take to overcome. On a big cammed engine, you'd want a really weak spring. On one that's not, you want a strong enough spring because it's got at least 15 inches of vacuum. The less vacuum, the weaker the spring to hold the piston down. If the piston comes up prematurely, you're going to have a lot of fuel flow where you don't want it. You can change the rod, the emitting rod size as well as the spring size. And even the jet down in the bottom, you can change the jet underneath. You can go to a like if you put really big jets in, you gotta have a big metering rod or else it won't fit down in the bore anymore. This end of it right here. So you got different sizes of rods, you got different sizes of jets, you got different springs to tune your carburetor to uh, perform the way you want it to. Now, what this arm does, pulls up and down on the accelerator pump so that each time you push the gas pedal, you get a little shot of gas out of those nozzles that we were looking at earlier, the accelerator pump discharge nozzle. It overcomes the time that it takes to push the gas and for the vacuum catch up and pull fuel out of these venturis here. This is going to adjust your accelerator pump stroke. So when you hit the gas, it closes that off, it lets it recuperate quicker. The more the arm lays down, the more stroke you're giving it. This allows you to be able to adjust the accelerator pump stroke on the fly as you need to in case you have a dead spot and there's such thing as having too much accelerator pump stroke because it'll douse it so you got to figure out that happy medium spot in between this is a pretty neat little feature on these old carburetors when the choke is shut the secondary will not open it won't give you so much because the engine's cold the little trap door comes into play but when it's warm and the fast idle cam falls down this vacuum pull off here is so when the choke is shut, slam shut as far as it'll go. And when, as soon as it fires, the little vacuum is gonna hit this pot right here and pull it back off. It's called a choke pull off. And it'll bring it back in as it needs. But usually it just gives it enough where it can overcome that until the choke heats up. And, and it goes full open. The main shaft is pretty good. There's a little bit of play in it. Alright, this guy goes back in. Steel strainer. You can actually see through it a little. It's just a, a brass mesh. As you got a, there's a rod that comes up out of the intake manifold that hooks to this thing. And it'll push up and close that. So when you start the engine, it'll suit the vacuum a little pull up, this diaphragm will go in and it'll pull it off somewhat now. Here we go. I forgot to spring this thing. I thought something looked funny about the dash pot. There is a setting under there. You can take, you can give it spring tension or take it away and it allows the air velocity once the secondary is open. It's not ready for it yet. And as air velocity increases, it'll pull this open and then it'll allow these emulsion tubes here, instead of having venturis like a AFB did, it's just got these tubes and it's just, it really unleashes the fuel, you open them up. And as we get using this carburetor, it'll probably get better and better. It's been sitting a long time. Got your fast idle cam right here. When the choke is closed, you give a little tap on the gas. It brings your idle up into the fast idle position. As you, as the engine warms up, you give it a little tappy tap. Choke's opening. That little cam goes away and allows you curb idle. Things are pretty good, pretty good. Get some fuel in it. A little WD-40 that crap out of all these other things. 
and get them all working good. Maybe put a little uh, white lithium spray lube on there. But here we are. I believe this is a wrap on the carburetor until it's on the car. Well, thankfully the rain cleared. So we're not doing this in the rain. <laughs> all the same guys who are mad about me complaining about Chrysler starters or yeah. gonna complain that I'm that I don't like Carters. Stock is boring. <laughs> Dang dude. Do we hook up the battery and give it a shot? Can't see why not. Okay.
Maiden voyage of Marcia out in public. This is the dirtiest part of the whole car. I'm Kevin Shaw and you've been watching Mopar Connection Magazine. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, leave a comment, and share with your friends. It's definitely going to help us grow the channel. And if you want more awesome Mopar content, please visit us at www.moparconnectionmagazine.com where new articles are written and published every day, Monday through Friday, entirely subscription-free to you.